Hello, I'm Petty Officer James Fraser from HMCS Chippewa, the Naval Reserve Division in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm a recruiter and military career counselor, so I'm very familiar with the application process and all the steps involved in becoming a member of the Canadian Armed Forces. And today we're going to be talking about the CFAT or Canadian Forces Aptitude Test. The CFAT is an aptitude test which is administered during the application process to the Canadian Armed Forces for all elements, Army, Navy and Air Force for regular force and reserve. It will determine your eligibility and suitability to serve in the Canadian Armed Forces, whether you qualify as a non-commissioned member or as an officer, and whether you qualify for the specific occupations that you've selected. The CFAT is a timed multiple choice test. There's an individual time limit for each section, and for multiple choice, there are four options with one correct answer for each question. Section one, verbal skills, contains 15 questions, which you have five minutes to complete. It focuses on comprehension and vocabulary. For example, you'll be given a word and you'll be asked to find the synonym or antonym or do some word comparisons. Section two, spatial ability, also has 15 questions. For this one, you will have 10 minutes to complete. This one focuses on folding objects in your mind. You'll be given a pattern and you'll have to select which form that you could make if you folded that two-dimensional pattern up into a three-dimensional shape. And for some of these, there'll also be designs or images on different faces of the 3D objects and you'll have to select the answer that lines up properly when folded. Section three, problem solving, consists of 30 questions for which you will have 45 minutes to complete. This section focuses on math word problems and pattern recognition. You're going to want to review division, multiplication, simple math, uh, conversions from decimals to fractions to percentages and ratios. Let's talk eligibility. How is the test scored? First of all, you'll receive an overall score on the entire test, which will determine if you met the minimum cutoff score for a non-commissioned member or the minimum cutoff score for officer. You will also receive a score for each individual section, which will determine if you meet the standard for different occupations. Some occupations are weighted more towards one section than another. You may have noticed if you've written the test before or if you've been researching online that recruiters usually won't give the specific score required for each occupation. This is for a number of reasons, but the main one is because it's based on a percentile. So your score compared to the average score from data collected over a period of time. However, a recruiter usually will tell you in general how you did on each section and what you need to work on improving in order to qualify for the occupation of your choice. For example, a recruiter may say, you did very well on the verbal skills and spatial ability, but if you want to be eligible for marine technician as an example, you're going to need to practice the problem solving section and improve your score on that section. All right, let's talk study resources. I'm gonna share with you my top three recommendations for study resources. And the first one, of course, is the official Canadian Armed Forces Practice CFAT, which is available at forces.ca. Let's take a look. If you go to forces.ca and click on joining the Canadian Armed Forces, that's gonna tell you the steps to join, submitting your application, reliability screening, and number three is the aptitude test. And right there, you will find a link for the Practice Canadian Forces Aptitude Test. The advantages of the practice CFAT are that it accurately replicates the format and the types of questions that you'll get on the real test. Another advantage is that it has a timer on screen in the corner, just like the real test, so that you can manage your time. You don't have to have a separate time or be looking at a clock. And the last advantage is that it does give you the correct answers at the end. So it doesn't just give you your score, it will give you each question and what the correct answer would be. Some of the disadvantages are that although it gives you the correct answer, it doesn't give you any explanations or descriptions of, of how to get that answer. I've also heard some feedback that the practice test is a little bit easier than the real test. So if you go online and do the practice test, you think, oh, no big deal, I don't really need to study. I would encourage you to continue to study because the real test may be slightly more difficult than the practice test based on what applicants have shared with me. And also that it is simply one test. There's only one set of questions. So this isn't really enough studying to do the practice test. You're gonna to wanna to do this test to get a feel for the format and the types of questions and the timing. But I would also recommend studying a little bit further. My next recommendation is armytest.com and I've included a link in the description. So if you click on that and pull it up, you're gonna see the CFAT preparation homepage here. There is a free test, which I recommend doing, and then you can get access to a paid membership as well.
I would say that the questions accurately reflect the types of questions that you'll get on the real test. I really also appreciate how you can study individual sections. Once you get into the app, you can click on if you just want to practice verbal skills or spatial awareness or problem solving. So let's take a look and click on it here. You'll see right away um, that there's a couple of different tests. You want to make sure that you click on the Canadian Armed Forces CFAT and then you can get started with the free practice test. You can also scroll to the bottom and you'll see our app link right here. And you can download the app on the Apple App Store or Google Play. I like the app because you can study offline. It's very convenient at any time. You can just open it up and practice your CFAT questions. And I would say the best advantage is that it has detailed explanations. So it doesn't just give you the correct answer. It will give you an explanation of how to solve the problem. My next recommendation is another YouTuber, Kyra Nankaville, and her channel, Exploring the Calf. She does interviews, she has a podcast, it's a great channel, and one of the things she has is a series on ACE the CFAT, CFAT preparation. So you can go to her playlists here, and click on ACE the CFAT, Guide for Success, and there's a series of videos. One is an overview with tips, kind of like this one, and then you're gonna get individual videos on each one of the sections where she goes through detailed explanations. This is a fantastic series, I highly recommend it. Again, the only disadvantage is that it's just one set of questions. So while it's very thorough, you're gonna to wanna to practice more than just one set of questions. And I'll just add a disclaimer here that the only official resource endorsed by the Canadian Armed Forces is the Practice CFAT found on the forces.ca page. Any other resource is just a personal recommendation of mine. I'm gonna add a note here in working as a recruiter that the CFAT is very important. It's not just for eligibility getting into the Canadian Armed Forces, it sometimes comes into consideration when we're talking about competitive occupations. Some occupations are in demand, we're always hiring, so if you meet the minimum cutoff score, you're good to go. Other occupations are competitive, meaning that we have more qualified applicants than we have positions to hire for. And in these cases, like any other job, of course, they're gonna look at a number of factors, your education, your work history, your interview, but one of the things they do look at is the CFAT. So for example, if someone aced it and scores in the 95th percentile and someone else who's going for the same job just squeaked past the minimum cutoff, well, that is a factor that will go into this decision-making process. So you really want to study, prepare, and score as highly as possible. And that brings us to talking about the results. So the results of your aptitude test. After you complete the test, you'll meet with the recruiter or military career counselor who will discuss your score and there'll be one of three things that could happen. First of all, the good news, you've met the minimum cutoff score for entrance into the Canadian Armed Forces and you met the standard for your selected occupation. That will be a short and happy meeting. Number two is that you did not meet the minimum cutoff score for eligibility into the Canadian Armed Forces. This means that either your application file is gonna be closed or you're gonna go for a rewrite. And the third option is that yes, you met the minimum cutoff score for entrance into the Canadian Armed Forces. However, maybe you didn't meet the eligibility score for your first choice, your selected occupation. So in this case, you would be given a choice where you could either look at all of the other occupations that are available and your recruiter will provide you with a list of the occupations that you did meet the cutoff score for. And if any of those are interesting to you, you can say, you know what, I've changed my mind, I'm gonna go with this here and you can just move forward with the application process. Or if you're really set on that first choice, at that point, you could look into a rewrite. So let's talk rewrite policy. There are a couple of important points to consider when you're thinking about rewriting. And the number one point is that the score that counts is your most recent score, not your highest score. So say you met the minimum cutoff, but you didn't meet the standard for the occupation you wanted, you choose to rewrite, and even though this is very rare, it is possible that you could do worse on your second time around and no longer meet the cutoff score, the minimum cutoff for entrance into the Canadian Armed Forces, and you'd therefore not be eligible for enrollment. So my recommendation is if you're doing a rewrite, you have to make sure that you take it seriously, you really study and prepare. The next point is that it is a minimum of one month of time between your initial test and a rewrite, and also between a your rewrite and a second rewrite. Another important point is that you can only write the CFAT a maximum of three times. So your initial test and then two rewrites. 
The policy is different for the first and second level rewrites. For the first rewrite, you need to demonstrate that you have studied and prepared to improve your score on the test. So say what resources you used and how much studying you did, and then you can apply for the rewrite. If you're doing a second rewrite or third overall attempt, at this point you will actually have to complete academic upgrading. You'll have to take a course or any kind of academic program that is related to the aptitude test and you'll have to actually show a transcript or a course completion certificate um, in order to be granted that second rewrite or third attempt. So again, this just reinforces how important that second attempt or first rewrite is. Um, it's more difficult to get the third try. So if you're going for a second try, really make sure that you study, prepare, and are ready to improve your score. One other thing I'd like to mention is that all of this information is available on the forces.ca website. If you go to the how do I prepare for the CFAT link, they're going to answer all of the questions that you may have. And now it's time for my personal tips. How can I help you be successful on the CFAT? So the first one, and it's one you might not think of, is it's a multiple choice test and I highly encourage you to remember to look at the answers. Sometimes you'll read a question, a great example is like pattern recognition, and you could spend 30 seconds or even a minute trying to figure out the pattern before you look at the A, B, C, D multiple choice options. My recommendation is look at those options right away because sometimes it's easier to answer it by process of elimination or sometimes the options presented kind of even kind of give it away or at least make it a lot easier to figure out the pattern. So read the question, take a look at the options to give you an idea of what you're looking for and then go working on that pattern recognition. The second tip is to remember that the education qualifications to get into the Canadian Armed Forces as a non-commissioned member is completion of grade 10, including math and English. So the level of the questions that we're going to be asking is around grade 10 high school math. So if you find yourself doing calculus or linear algebra or advanced calculations, you've probably gone somewhere wrong in the logic. It's going to be basic division, multiplication, ratios, decimals, percentages, those types of things. So you're going to want to review and get confident and fast at doing your simple math operations. There's not going to be any higher level math, calculus, etc. involved in solving these questions. The next tip is obvious, but my advice is to practice a lot and practice in a large volume of questions, um, especially in the spatial awareness, for example, there's only so many different patterns and 3D shapes that they can come up with on these tests. So practice a lot and you're going to start to see the same types of questions coming up over and over again, which is going to help you a lot with your familiarity and your confidence. So practice and study, be prepared and you'll be set for success. Next one, again, might be obvious, but get a good sleep, eat good food, be mentally prepared for the test. So an example of this is don't stay up and cram all night the night before the test because this isn't facts that you need to memorize or material to study where cramming is going to help. You need to be sharp and alert and be ready to solve problems and make quick decisions. So having a good sleep, practicing frequently, for a period of time leading up to the test is going to help you a lot more than an all night cram session and being tired when you're writing the test. The next one is something that you'll be given during the instructions, but it'll be good to know in advance as well. And that is that you are not negatively scored for incorrect answers. So if you get a question right, you get a point, if you get a question wrong, you get zero. You don't get negative one. So that means you're encouraged. It's in your best interest to answer all the questions. Which leads us to the next point, time management. If you find yourself taking a long time on a question, if you've got yourself into a long division, you're trying to remember how to do it, you've got your paper and pencil out, you're making lots of notes, it's taking you a minute, two minutes to answer one question, my recommendation is just to move on and come back to it later. Make sure that you have time to get through the entire test because some of the other questions might be faster or easier for you to answer. Make sure you get through the test, answer all the questions, and then come back to ones that are taking more time or might be more difficult. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Remember to click the links in the description for the study resources and good luck on your aptitude test.